Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode I'm having another close look at Chaos and Warhammer 40k, with a start collecting set for Chaos Space Marines. So after the spindly creepiness of yesterday's video about the Vex Machinator and why you don't want to run into it on your way down to the shops to get some milk, and you probably need to watch yesterday's video to make sense of that, and also to get me views and likes and subscribes and shares and all those fantastic things that keep the channel going. But anyway, today's video is the start collecting set for the Chaos Space Marines. Nice mixture of miniatures in here. Uh, be interesting to see if there are any challenges in the build. But uh, yeah, some really cool stuff on the back here too. 10,000 years of treachery have seen the Chaos Space Marines bind their souls and technology in myriad forms with the hellspawn of the warp. Masters of possession take sick pride in melting flesh with the demon. Some become obliterators. Walking heavy weapons platforms with every fiber of their being optimized to inflict death. And demon engines such as venom crawlers are the foulest result of these fell bonds. Machines infused with malefic entities. Determined to bring horror, pain and slaughter to their enemies. Warhammer 40k is not just kittens and sunshine. Sometimes it's this stuff. Okay, so it's pretty much always... It's, it's always this stuff. There aren't any kittens in Warhammer 40k. Back soon. And we've got the Master of Possession. We've got these very, very cool obliterators. The Greater Possessed there. This amazing looking Venom Crawler. I can't wait to see what that looks like beside the Machinator. And then the uh, Ten Chaos Space Marines there. So a nice range of miniatures. And I think some really cool sculpts in here, too. So here it is on the back. Just uh, some more different product images there of these beautifully painted minis. And then right at the bottom, it shows you how to paint them exactly like this in just three simple steps. Okay, let's get into this box. If you ever hear me complaining that they've included a tray with one of these kits, uh, let me know because I should never complain about that. These trays are absolutely fantastic. They're a great way to build the miniatures inside something and keep bits and pieces from falling all over the place. I just think it's a very simple but incredibly effective addition to these kits. Got the instruction manual here. Got a bunch of different base sizes. They look like 32s, maybe 40s here. Another 40, and it looks like there's a big base underneath, and then into the sprues. But let's just have a look at these instructions first. Uh, and all in one, sometimes with these kinds of kits, which combine multiple different kits, like battle forces and the like, you might get a range of instruction manuals of the retail releases of the individual components. But in this case, we've got an all-in-one manual. And it's always nice to know that it's been custom designed for this particular kit. Uh, A4 format, uh, the one-to-one -one reproduction of the bases, so you can very easily identify uh, what base you should be using. And then we've got these great straightforward color instructions, multi-step. I've called it grimdark Lego in the past, but that's very much what this looks like. These look like Lego instructions. I don't know if there are any variant builds, but... Um, I'm not too fussed if there aren't. All of these sets are new to me. I don't have much in the way of chaos. I got that Dark Vengeance kit, which is a bit of chaos in it a few years ago. But but I think this is my first recent um, chaos kit. Uh, these, oh, are they obliterators? Is that what they're called? They look so impressive. They are such cool models. Wow, and that yellow represents how much glue to put on? Seriously? It's like the whole front of this guy. And the last kit is this Venom Crawler, which looks like a heavily pregnant spider. That is utterly haunting. Kind of like a, a skull, a like a huge skull crossed with a pregnant spider. 
um, um, whichever bot writes the uh, subtitles for YouTube videos, it's probably deciding, no, I'm just not going to write that. I'm not going to write huge skull crossed with giant pregnant spider or whatever it was I said. The bot is just going to refuse that one. It's going to be asking for a raise after this. Uh, then we get into all the stats. We got multilingual versions of those as well. And then finally, the paint guide here with all of the recommended Citadel paints to use. There are some really sweet blends on display there. That pink into white flesh is so cool. I'm loving those shiny crab claws as well. I'll quickly go through the sprues here. This is a standalone, so I'm guessing this is the Master of Possession. Uh, some exquisite detail on the clothing. That backpack looks sensational too. Loving the eight pointed stars, the sort of beast head on him as well there. Looks like skulls around the bottom of his robes. Oh, that looks really, really neat. And then this looks like maybe the Obliterators and the Venom Crawler. And quite like the Vex Machinator in some of the components there. And into the final sprue and some of this detail is utterly stupendous. Look at that backpack, for example. There's bound to be more backpacks knocking around. Yeah, and they've different designs on each of them there. The weapons are sensational as well. I am already a big fan of this. And then I think I've had one of these before because I have it a few older Chaos Space Marine ones, but maybe this is a slightly updated one. It is 2018, so I definitely wouldn't own, have owned this. Really nice designs on there. I'm reading a lot of Horace Heresy books at the minute, so a lot of these logos are making me shiver. <laughs> but um, yeah, really cool to have that. Okay, I'm going to go get this built and I will be right back. So here's the fully built up Start Collecting Chaos Space Marines set. Got our 10 Chaos Marines here. Got the two Muty Boys here. These are the Greater Possessed, the Master of Possession in the middle. Venom crawler at the back and then the two obliterators here either side and the rules are very straightforward for setting up the units uh, for every five of these heretic Astartes you could have an aspiring champion which is this dude here right in front of the center and for every 10 that you have you can add in a heavy weapons dude like this fella here with the auto cannon so I'm going to start looking at the aspiring champion because he's got this killer chain axe that is just phenomenal looking. There are no rules for this within the instruction leaflet for whatever reason. You do get rules for the plasma pistol that he's allowed to use, but um, the chain axe, I guess, should be able to find it within the app, but it would have been nice to have the rules for that in the booklet. Uh, Detail-wise, around the whole thing, he's pretty cool looking. Got yeah, symbols of chaos all over these dudes. There's some really well-placed skulls. Look at these at the end of the backpack. I absolutely love that. I'm sure the Astartes look at this and think, we should have gone with that design rather than just a ball. Uh, the screaming skull at the back is pretty neat too. And then some space on this pauldron for um, decals, unit numbers, things like that. The more you look at it, actually, the more you'll see just the iconography of chaos all over the place all these adornments and embellishments and pretty chilling looking helmets as well i'm not going to look at everything here i mean most of these chaos space marines have bolt pistols and chain swords like this guy and uh you'll see that the level of detail doesn't drop off just because they're not aspiring champions they have some really nice embellishment throughout and for students of uh chaos within 40k you'll see things like the eye of horus and You'll probably recognize other key icons and symbols throughout. And here's one who has given up the chain sword for a standard bolter rifle. Got the bolt pistol in the holster there as well. But uh, just great looking figures, great looking standard troops. There's nothing really to complain about with these. They, they look good. They went together really easily. Here's the heavy weapons operator because of the 10-man the squad. And you get this cracking looking auto cannon. This looks like it weighs a ton. I love this sideways screaming face along the upper receiver there. Just so cool. And yeah, you totally need a 
bayonet for this big heavy weapon. Absolutely, why wouldn't you? If there's space, you can put it on there. And on the backpack here, you can see that it's different from the others. This actually has uh, twin replacement drum magazines here for the for the auto cannon. I don't know how you're supposed to reach them, especially when you're completely covered in ceramite armor and carrying a double-handed weapon. Maybe there's like a little spring-loaded trigger that you press and they pop up in the air and you deftly catch them and slot them in place. Or you rely on someone walking around the back and grabbing it for you. Who knows? The next miniature is another variation on the loadout with the combat knife out. The bolt pistol is on his uh, left hip and has the boulder rifle out there with the, the drum mag load. And then the rifle sling is actually like a chain, which is pretty rock and roll. And the remaining five here are very similar to um, ones we've already seen. Bolt pistols and chain swords or bolt pistols and bolter rifles. Uh, the only standout really would be this one here who has a plasma rifle. And it's a nice and chaosy looking plasma rifle with some cool symbols on it. Like these spikes at the front. Uh, what else? Bald head on this one. Uh, pretty cool pauldron detail there. Got the nice bird of prey claws holding onto these vents. And then a crack and frag grenade on the hip here. I think most of these units have crack and frag. Then we're on to the greater possessed, which are these two muty boys at the back. I'll look at this one on the left first. Uh, they come with no firearms at all. They are just uh, spiky, speedy runners. And I love the mutations on these. The, the cloven hoof there. This fantastic, almost like a, a power fist, but it's not. It's just bone and grossness and then the big uh, crustacean like claws too cool the sense of movement in them is fantastic especially after the quite static looking chaos space marines here would love to see an update of those to not to be controversial but maybe up to primaris sort of scale and get similar motion into them that we've seen in a lot of them the more recent loyalist space marine units that have been released uh, that would be very cool and here's the other greater possessed. Again, uh, another super spiky fella with these great mutated hands. The uh, This one much more sort of crab-like, the claw. And some fantastic detail throughout. You can see all the incredible mutations across the whole creature. And again, in a really dynamic pose. Kind of remind me of the wolfen a little bit. But really, really cool. And just while I'm thinking about it, with the backpack off this, this would be a savage, like, uh, chaos blitzer for Blood Bowl. This thing would look so cool on the Blood Bowl field. Anyway, it's hard for me not to think in terms of what works with Blood Bowl, because there's just so many cool miniatures you could easily adapt and have them work really well on the gridiron. Let's check out the Master of Possession. Is currently being snagged by the um, Venom Crawler there. And this is a Psyker unit. Not much in the way of weaponry, like a bolt pistol here. Got this force stave here for, from, for melee attacks, grenades, things like that. But uh, really the, the power of this one is in the uh, Psyker abilities. And um, a, a beautifully sculpted miniature. Lots of flame effects coming out of all of these bits and pieces. This ball or whatever is that's in its hand. Uh, is on fire definitely gives me a feel of a sort of a shaman there's something about it really is that ritual there's a ritualistic shamanic kind of feel to this and i dig it and i normally don't like the animal skulls and things like that in place of um, helmets or faces but this just seems to work it just fits in this whole theme and the skulls again on the sides of the backpack here i really like that miniature Again, lots of energy in it. You'll notice he's actually connected to the base by his cloak and these sort of skull bits and pieces. He is, there's one foot up and the other foot up. So this master of possession, this chaos psyker is uh, floating. Of course he is. Let's look at the venom crawler. Very similar to the Vex Machinator from yesterday. I do feel it's like this American football helmet, a skull, a spider, just all gone India. Big old mashup. 
And I like this miniature. I love this face in the midst of all of this spikiness. And it looks so cool. Absolute nightmare for someone like me to think about painting. Because there's just so many tiny little details here to pick out. I do like these excruciator cannons on either side. They just look really neat. And all of these other weapons are named. These aren't just for display. You've got the eviscerating claws and then the soul flare tendrils. That's what these boys here are called. But a great looking miniature. Really creepy, really disturbing. Seeing this thing clattering towards you on the battlefield would just be chilling to the bone. And then finally my favorite two, the obliterators. These flash metal guns up top, a huge spinning Gatling gun being fed across this little bridge by this uh, magazine here. Uh, look at the twin flamers underneath the, the, the big old power fist there. I just think this is fantastic. As soon as I saw that face within those teeth, I was reminded of the Hellbrute. And I just have it right here. So you can see the pair of them side by side. The Hellbrit does have a few feet on the obliterator, but it's definitely wouldn't look out of place side by side. Even though that stance there as they're firing, that, that looks too cool. I do love the Hellbrit, I gotta say. But um, the obliterator just looks so neat. The embellishment here on the knee with the skull and creepy demonic faces. And there's fantastic little bits and pieces to pick out in the whole thing. Even these power systems in the back for powering the legs. Great stuff. Again, more of these flash metal guns on either side. They've got like, I think, a storm bolter or something above that crushing fist. And then maybe a heavy flamer or something over this one. I'm not sure. Uh, but it is hard to tell a little bit what, what these weapons are. The leaflet that comes with this set probably doesn't have the most detail i think you'd have to rely on the codex for detail on what each of these weapons actually represents and again a haunted possessed demonic little visage tucked away inside that metal body very creepy and very cool but that's them all that's the uh, start collecting set the chaos space marines and while the standard marines here these standard units up front don't really ring my bell too heavily. The Greater Possess, the Master Possession, the two Obliterators and that Venom Crawler, they make up for it. It definitely makes it worth the investment. And there's still enough going on in these sculpts, especially with the, the heavy weapons, the alternate sort of approaches to the weapons loadout, like the Plasma Gun. The, there are some of them that show a little bit of movement as well. There's enough there to hold your interest. There's enough there to, to make this um, a cool enough set to build and I imagine a cool enough set to paint. So yeah, that's them all. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. In the next episode, I will finally be unboxing and reviewing the Blackstone Fortress core set. Uh, it's been a long time coming and uh, a few people on the channel have been asking me when I would be looking at it. So I'll be looking at it in the next episode. Looking forward to it, because any game that comes out of Games Workshop that has a solo mode, sign me up. Absolutely. Can't wait for that. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.